हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द अमेजिंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ पी डब्ल्यू इंग्लिश सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर सेवेंथ लेक्चर ऑफ सोल्यूशन वी आर ऑलमोस्ट एट द एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर सुपर एक्साइटेड एज एम आई सो वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इनिशियली इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी एक्चुअली स्टार्टेड कॉलीगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज एंड वी डिस्कस्ड टू कॉलीगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज राइट येस सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर कॉलीगेटिव प्रॉपर्टीज ओनली नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टू other types of colligative properties i hope you are super excited because i am you have to just understand the starting of the concept and i'm sure you will answer every question on your own so let's start today what are we going to discuss so first of all we are going to discuss depression and freezing point just a second see nice huh. this is first we are going to discuss depression and freezing point which is a colligative property and osmotic pressure which is again a colligative property so now let's start my dear students first is depression in freezing point for this what do we need ma'am just like the other parts we need a solvent a pure solvent and a solution which in which we have added a non volatile solute right yes so let's start first of all we want uh, how we need a container yes ma'am we need a container so here is your container okay then you need another container as well so you have another container exactly the same container here okay i hope all of everything is same here so what you did is you added you added here was your pure solvent so this is your pure solvent and then my dear students then you did added non volatile solute to it okay so now you have your pure solvent with your solute yes ma'am so now we will call it as a solution perfect this is exactly the same thing which we did in the last two colligator properties now what we are going to do is we will be defining the freezing points here we will be defining the freezing points here now let us consider that the freezing point of the pure solvent is tf not and let us say the freezing point of the solution is t f okay so if you need to write then you can write that tf not is the freezing point of a pure solvent and tf is the freezing point of solution okay now again a same question we have read this depression but let's not under, uh, let's not take it very seriously let's find out that will will the freezing point of the pure solvent be more or the freezing point of your solution will be more okay so now how are we we going to find out that for that we actually need to study the graph if you will understand the graph you will definitely be able to answer this particular question okay so let's start my dear students for that graph what you need to understand before is that let's first define what is freezing point let's first define what is freezing point okay so my dear students from the very very start or starting of your uh, studying of science you might have uh, studied this that the temperature the temperature at which at which the solid state starts getting converted into the liquid state and they attain a equilibrium that particular point is known as the freezing point okay so now let's let me uh, make you understand this imagine you have you have ice here you have h2o that is your ice we are talking about freezing point so let's imagine you have liquid here okay water in its liquid state okay and it is getting converted into ice 
तो नाउ इमेजिन यू नो दैट यू नो दैट फॉर कन्वर्टिंग अ लिक्विड इन टू इट्स सॉलिड स्टेट यू नीड टू कंडेंस इट ओके यू नीड टू कंडेंस इट यू नीड टू फ्रीज इट येस नाउ माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स वॉट वर यू डूइंग वेन यू वर एक्चुअली कन्वर्टिंग योर लिक्विड इन टू द गैस यू वर प्रोवाइडिंग हीट टू इट येस मैम वेन यू वॉन्टेड टू कन्वर्ट योर लिक्विड इन टू द गैस स्टेट यू वर प्रोवाइडिंग हीट सो दैट इट विल फॉर्म मोर एंड मोर ऑफ वेपर्स बट नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू कन्वर्ट अ लिक्विड इन टू इट्स Uh, solid state that means you want to condense it you want to freeze it for this my dear students you actually try to take away the heat from the liquid so that it might get freezed right yes so my dear students let us let us say that the freezing point of water is 0 degree celsius we say this that the freezing point of water is actually 0 degree celsius so what actually happens at 0 degree celsius is you had liquid you had water in its liquid state and you started freezing it when you started freezing it you tried to freeze it what you did you actually tried to take the heat away from it that is you were trying to decrease its temperature initially let us say you had 20 degree celsius of temperature uh, water you had 20 20 degree celsius then you you actually was trying to decrease the temperature and when you reached the 0 degree celsius what happened what happened my dear students your liquid your water which was in its liquid state actually started getting converted into the ice form that is the solid state right yes and my dear students this 0 degree celsius is that temperature at which the equal amount the equal amount of your solid gets converted into liquid and the equal amount not equal amount the rate of freezing is is actually equal so therefore i can say that equilibrium is achieved that the rate at which your liquid water is getting converted into ice is exactly equal to the rate at which your ice is getting converted into the liquid state this is how you actually define a freezing point freezing point is actually a temperature at which the rate of conversion of your solid state into liquid state is exactly equal to the uh, rate of conversion of the liquid into the uh, solid state okay this is what is actually your freezing point so if i if i talk about this particular thing happening into a container what will happen my dear students you have h2o liquid state now it now at 0 degree celsius what is happening the water is getting converted into ice right yes so ma'am an equilibrium has been achieved yes so now if i want to ask you my dear students that we have defined the freezing point we know that it is that temperature where the solid state and the liquid state are in equilibrium to each other if i talk about some vapors formed here what will happen ma'am we can say that here since the container is closed the vapor pressure for both of them will be a constant value right the vapor pressure of both of them will be same not constant the vapor pressure for the solid and the liquid will be equal right it will be same i hope you understand i hope you understand this also now you have to relate it to what we have till now studied we have studied till now that when whenever you increase the temperature whenever you increase the temperature more and more of the vapor was formed right yes so with increase in temperature more and more of the vapors were formed and now my dear students you are trying to decrease the temperature you are trying to take away the heat if you are trying to decrease the temperature if you are trying to take away the heat the number of vapors the amount of vapor will keep on decreasing right yes the vapor pressure will keep on decreasing can we say that the vapor pressure is actually kind of decreasing yes ma'am the vapor pressure is continuously decreasing with the temperature right yes so this is what is happening here this is what is happening here i hope you've got this point why i made you understand this because from this particular part we'll draw a graph and from that graph we will be finding out that will there be a depression or an elevation in the freezing point okay i hope it is clear if you need to write it you can write it first we wrote this part then this okay 
yes now let's now let's try to make a graph out of it now let's try to make a graph out of it okay yes so again my dear students i told you i have given you the major information now what you are supposed to do you are only going to answer me every part of it see this is a this is a graph here you have vapor pressure here and you have temperature here okay yes now imagine imagine we are just a second i am actually not feeling well and uh, let me just switch off the ac yeah okay now we can study now imagine you have a pure solvent okay you have a pure solvent and it has some vapor pressure okay yes so if you have a, a pure solvent and it has some vapor pressure here so now what you are trying to do now what you are trying to do you are trying to take uh, you are trying to decrease the temperature so with decrease in temperature i hope all of you understand that the vapor pressure will starts uh, will start decreasing right yes the same way as we increase the temperature more and more vapors were getting formed the same way as we will try to decrease the temperature the heat will be taken out and that is the reason the vapor pressure will eventually decrease okay so for a pure solvent when a vapor pressure from liquid decreases this is how it decreases this is how it decreases okay this is how it decreases i hope this is clear with you yes now i have told you that this is your pure solvent okay so what actually happened here is my dear students you you started to you started to decrease the temperature see the temperature corresponding to this is this and slowly and slowly as you move this side what is happening temperature is decreasing as your temperature is decreasing i hope you can see that the vapor pressure is also decreasing the vapor pressure is also decreasing if you move down you can see that yes ma'am so you are decreasing the temperature the uh, pure solvents vapor pressure is also decreasing a point will be reached a point will be reached that is your zero degree celsius for water for a pure solvent like water which will be its freezing point right Right, yes let us say this is that particular point which is known as its freezing point and this freezing point my dear students is the temperature at which the solid state and the liquid state have came into a equilibrium have came into a equilibrium now as you cross this zero degree celsius as you just move down below zero degree celsius what will happen all your liquid will be converted into the solid state just as from higher temperature to zero degree degree celsius the whole of the liquid uh, state the whole of the state was for liquid state same way my dear students as you will keep on decreasing and as you will move a little below the freezing point what will happen the whole of the state will be now a solid state okay now after this particular point the state has came out to be a solid state and for solid state my dear students since liquid just let me draw this line and then i'll make you understand okay yes so what happens is now for a solid state my dear students what happens as you decrease the vapor pressure for solids as you decrease the temperature the vapor pressure decreases linearly for liquid state the decrease was not linear right yes but for solid state the state uh, the decrease is actually linear so can i say that so can i say that this is actually your liquid state here and this is your here solid state i hope you get this point i hope you are getting this point yes now let me repeat it again because you need to understand this particular part here my dear students i said you had a pure solvent okay now for a pure solvent if you want to if you want to get it converted into a solid state so you need to decrease its temperature yes as you will decrease its temperature you know that you are trying to take away the heat so the vapor pressure of that particular solvent will also keep on decreasing with temperature as you decrease the temperature decrease the temperature decrease the temperature a point will be reached where the solid will be in equilibrium with the liquid right yes so this is actually known as the freezing point of that particular solvent 
so i can say that this particular point is the freezing point of pure solvent right yes so this is the freezing point of pure solvent so tf not is the freezing point of pure solvent i hope it is clear to you yes ma'am so this is your freezing point of pure solvent now what happens is after after you have reached the freezing point now you will obviously you were decreasing the temperature you will keep on decreasing after the freezing point as you decrease the temperature the state gets converted into the solid state now it has all been freezed now the solid with that as well you will uh, keep on decreasing temperature and when you will keep on decreasing temperature now the vapor pressure will decrease linearly so now this will decrease linearly so this is how you get a plot right yes so now what i want to tell you here is the most important thing and what is that most important thing that is my dear students we have talked about a pure solvent but when you talk about a solution when you talk about a solution imagine you had solution here let us say the vapor pressure here is p not and the vapor pressure here is p of solution right yes and my dear students we have studied this n number of times that the solutions vapor pressure will always be less than your vapor pressure of the so pure solvent okay now when you have a solution when you have a solution my dear students it has the solute and a solvent when you have talk about a solvent you only have the solvent particles so when you uh, try to freeze when you try to decrease the temperature of a pure solvent only your solvent freezes right yes but when you talk about a solution or and for a solution when you start start decreasing its temperature and when the freezing point comes what actually freezes we have to discuss this right yes it's not that the whole solution will freeze no in a solution when you freeze my dear students only and only the pure solvent freezes and not your solute this is the most important thing which you need to understand that when you freeze a solution when you freeze a solution only the solvent part of that solution freezes and not your solute okay yes so this means that if i have a solution with a with a non volatile solute into it so if i try to freeze that solution in that solution only the solvent part will freeze but not the solute part so the freezed part will be of pure solvent only okay this is the thing which you need to under stand i hope you've got this point now now my dear students i told you that we know that the vapor pressure of the solution is always less than the vapor pressure of your pure solvent so if in this graph my dear students this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent means this is p not this is p not can can you tell me can you tell me that the vapor pressure of your solution will be less than the vapor pressure of your pure solvent this means that if this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent then the vapor pressure of your solution will be less than that and this is how you show that this is less right because this particular point corresponding to it is p not then this is the ps and ps should be less than your p not ps should be less than the p not okay this is the vapor pressure of pure solvent and this is the vapor pressure of solution right this is the condition we have been studying for n number of times now ma'am this is your solution this is your ps that is the solution now what you started doing is the same thing which you did the same thing which you did with the solvent now you are doing with the solution what will you do you will start you will start to decrease its temperature that is you will try to remove the heat so the vapor pressure of that solution will try uh, keep on decreasing right yes so this is how it will keep on decreasing 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 and it will come out here now this is the point where you need to understand 
understand this okay now when my dear students you started decreasing the temperature the vapor pressure also kept on decreasing now a point will be reached which is known as the freezing point of the solution so this will be the freezing point of the solution this will be the freezing point of the solution so now this is the point where the solid and the liquid state of the solution are in equilibrium okay now the moment you will come a little below the freezing point what will happen your solution will freeze will start freezing and the freezed part will be only and only pure solvent we talked about it that when we freeze a solution only the pure solvent part freezes not the non volatile solute part and we know that this is your solid state of your pure solvent if it here also the decreases only and only your pure solvent so now from here on this will overlap this will have to overlap so can i say that my dear students can i say that this is actually the freezing point of my solution hai na see here it is your solid state here it is your solid state so it will be linear but this particular point will be the freezing point of your solution yes so from here we can say that tf is the freezing point of solution and from the graph what can we say if we see the graph what can we say this is tf not this is tf and this will be your delta tf and ma'am we can see that we can see that from graph from graph we can say that tf is less than tf not that is the freezing point of your solution is less than the freezing point of pure solvent and that is the reason and that is the reason we call it as a depression in freezing point i hope you get this point How, why we call it as a depression in freezing point because the vapor i have made you understand the complete concept that when you for a pure solvent we started from a pure solvent you keep on decreasing the temperature the vapor pressure will decrease this is how it will decrease this will be the freezing point reached and then it will be linearly uh, the vapor pressure will be linearly decreasing with the temperature for the solid state of the pure solvent now if we talk about the solution we know that for a solution vapor pressure is always less than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent so we put it here and then with decrease in temperature we showed that how it varies it varies accordingly and we know that when the freezing starts only your pure solvent freezes so ma'am here our pure solvent starts freezing at this particular point and if it starts freezing this is known as your freezing point of that solution and after that since pure solvent freezes and this is your pure solvent freezing uh, graph so this will overlap and this will be your freezing point of the solution and we see that it is a it is always less than the freezing point of the pure solvent and that is the reason we call it as depression in freezing point i told you that i will not explain anything uh, differently you will answer it accordingly you knew this part vapor pressure part and you could have drawn this graph only and only you needed one kick start so now i have told you everything you are clear with the concept try doing this graph on your own you will be very clear with it right yes so this is how this is how we understand the depression in freezing point okay yes i hope it is clear very good my dear students now now if you want to draw it you can just draw it and then we'll move forward okay can we start now let's start okay i hope it is clear with you now my dear students now we are going to write the mathematical expression for depression in freezing point so here the topic will be mathematical expression so for the mathematical expression my dear students it is exactly similar to the boiling point part 1 we can understand it very clearly what will happen my dear students your delta tf which is actually equal to which is actually equal to tf now what is large what is the bigger value it is a depression in freezing point so ma'am pure freezing point will be always more than the freezing point of this and always and always remember my dear students we take this in a mod we always take this in a mod okay 
सो वी कैन कॉल इट दिस इज योर डिप्रेशन इन फ्रीजिंग पॉइंट ओके सो सिम द सेम वे वी डिस्कस्ड फॉर द एलिवेशन इन बॉइलिंग पॉइंट योर डेल्टा टी एफ इज एक्चुअली डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द मोलैलिटी ऑफ द सोल्यूशन सो हेयर एम ऑफ सोल्यूशन डिनोट्स द मोलैलिटी ऑफ सोल्यूशन ओके नाउ इमेजिन इमेजिन द मोर the non volatile solute added the more will be the molality of the solution and the more will be the depression in freezing point right yes the more the non volatile solute the more will be the depression in the freezing point now when you remove this proportionality you get delta tf is equal to kf into molality so this is the expression so this is the expression my dear students for depression in freezing point for depression in freezing point where you have kf where you have kf what does this denote let us talk about this the kf is your proportionality constant and it is known by a name which is known as cryoscopic constant it is a cryoscopic constant or we may call it as molal molal depression constant it is the molal depression constant okay it is it is called by these two particular names also my dear students the kf is actually it actually depends on the nature of the solvent the kf value for different solvents will be different so we can say that it depends on nature of solvent different solvents have different kf values okay your kf value for your solvent actually depends on the nature of the solvent different uh, solvents will have different kf values okay perfect i hope this is clear to you this is how we study the de uh, depression and freezing point now let's talk about the unit of kf now we are going to talk about the unit of kf unit of k okay how are we going to calculate the unit of kf very easy my dear students we have done this in the uh, elevation boiling part also delta tf is equal to kf into m so kf will be equal to delta tf upon molality we know that it is a decrease in temperature part so it will always be kelvin which can be denoted by k and if you talk about molality molality is mole per kg it is always and always moles per kg so the unit of kf comes out to be kelvin kg mole inverse kelvin kg mole inverse so this is the unit of your kf or your cryoscopic constant or your molal depression constant okay yes also my dear students we need to understand here a very important thing about kf is kf is equal to r into m into tf not whole square upon 1000 delta h f now now my dear students you need to understand this particular part you need to understand this particular part okay i told you i told you that kf actually depends on the nature of the solvent for different solvents kf values will be different okay so what all terms are present here they mean something okay so now let's talk about this what is r here r is your gas constant r is your gas constant okay r is your gas constant perfect i hope there is no issue if we talk about m it is the molar mass it is the molar mass of your solvent it is the molar mass of your 
pure solvent okay if you talk about the tf not it is the freezing point of pure solvent it is the freezing point of your pure solvent okay now if you talk about delta hf it is the enthalpy enthalpy of fusion it is the enthalpy of fusion now imagine if i talk about a particular solvent let us say water if you talk about one particular solvent water then r value gas constant is a constant value perfect if you talk about the molar mass of water that will be a constant value if you talk about the tf not value then for a pure solvent it has a fixed value of its freezing point so tf not is also fixed and my dear students enthalpy of fusion is also fixed so for a particular solvent kf has a fixed value right yes where these are the terms as uh, uh, respectively what they mean okay and based on these based on these calculations every kf value for every solvent is a fixed value let us say if we talk about kf value of water we call it uh, the value is 1.86 kelvin kg per mole right yes so, so this is how for different solvents you will be given kf values in the question you need not memorize it you only need to know one kf value which is for water other values will be given to you i hope this is clear to you if you want to write you can write and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it I hope you've written this as well. Okay. Now, my dear students, if you have talked about KF value, can I give you a homework? Can I give you a homework? Your homework is that you need to give me the information about KB. KB is your KB is your molar depression constant. Okay. KB will be equal to R M tb not whole square upon 1000 into delta h v delta h v where delta h is the enthalpy of vaporization and db tb will be the boiling point of your pure solvent okay yes so you have to find out this and then you have to calculate the kb value value for water so this is your homework this is your homework i hope you can do this you don't have any issue with this perfect my dear students so this is how we study about the freezing point part we have talked about the mathematical expression i i do i need to give you the expression that delta tf is equal to kf into molality which is equal to kf into molality is moles of solute upon given mass of solvent which will be in grams right which will be in grams then you will convert it into thousand and then this will be the expression for delta t f i hope this is clear my 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 students know how to calculate molality so we need not write the uh, the uh, different different uh, expressions for the same formula right yes we can derive them on our own i hope it is clear so you can write this and then we'll move forward okay I hope you've written this. Now we can move forward. Okay. So now my dear students, what I want to tell you here is that this is clear. Okay. Now we have to solve a question and then we'll be a little more clear about the things. Okay. So now let's solve one little question. The question here says that, just read the question. The question says that calculate the mass of ascorbic acid. You have to calculate the mass of ascorbic acid, vitamin C. You are given the formula of ascorbic ascorbic acid c6h8o6 okay so the molar mass of this ascorbic acid would be 6 into 12 plus 8 into 1 plus 16 into 6 i hope you'll calculate it as as in grams per mole okay now you calculated the molar mass and also you have to calculate the mass so you need to calculate this mass on your own in this particular question okay to be dissolved in 75 grams of acetic acid so this time the mass of your solvent which is your acetic acid is given to be how much 
75 grams okay 75 grams of acetic acid to lower its melting point by 1.5 degree celsius okay so it is given that by lower of melting point but you will say ma'am it is melting point not freezing point just a second just a second my dear students you have solid solid melts into a liquid right yes so this is a liquid state so here melting takes place perfect now if you talk about a liquid and when liquid comes what is this when liquid gets converted into a solid it is it's it is called freezing right so can i say that the melting point for solid is actually equal to the melting point of uh, is it actually equal to the freezing point of liquid right yes so if you are given that the there is a lowering of melting point by 1.5 degree celsius this means that it is actually telling you the information that the decrease in freezing point is 1.5 and it is degree celsius it doesn't matter the difference in kelvin or in degree celsius will always remain the same so i can say that this is 1.5 kelvin as well now you will be like no ma'am this cannot happen let's see let's see let's say i have 2 degree celsius temperature and i have to subtract this by 3 degree celsius of temperature okay my dear students okay i am taking the mod this will be the difference will be 1 degree celsius yes i hope this is clear now if i convert this degree celsius into kelvin 273 plus 2 will be 275 kelvin minus my dear students i have taken mod so i have given the answer in mod also i am telling you this if you have 3 here then 3 plus 273 will be 276 right kelvin now if you take the difference again my dear students the dif difference will be 1 kelvin so the numerical value is same the only unit is changing but the difference is all always same na yes that is the reason if the difference in degree celsius is 1.5 then the difference in kelvin will also be 1. five okay i am clear with this now if we see that this we are given the kf value as well which is 3.5 Nine. So now we need to use the depression and freezing point formula. So depression and freezing point delta T F is equal to K F into molality. Delta T F is given to be one point five. K F is given to be three point nine. And molality is moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kg. Your solute is uh, ascorbic acid. Yes, which given mass is seventy five. calculate the mass of ascorbic acid right yes we need to calculate the mass of ascorbic acid so let us say let us calculate here moles of ascorbic acid given mass we don't know but we need to calculate the molar mass here so i'll write it here molar mass this will be the molar mass which you can calculate right yes you calculate this and put it into this formula yes so this will be w upon molar mass which you can calculate divided by given mass of solvent solvents given mass is 75 grams but you need it in kg so you will divide it by 1000 now my dear students in this particular formula you have this value you have this value you have this values also you have molar mass here you will calculate this you will add this and you will get the molar mass so only and only the thing which you don't have is w and you can use that this expression and find out the value of w so this is how you will be solving the numericals super easy super interesting i hope everything is clear with you you can just go through the question and then we'll move forward the only thing which we need to understand is this particular part if the difference in melting point is given it actually means that you are given the different uh, difference in the freezing point okay yes perfect my dear students now let's move forward now the next thing which we are going to study is our another type of uh, colligative property which is your osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is actually denoted by pi osmotic pressure is actually denoted by pi let's understand what is osmotic pressure 
For understanding osmotic pressure, we need to understand a term which is your semi-permeable membrane. What is a semi-permeable membrane? We need to understand this and only then we can understand the osmotic pressure. For that, we need to understand the osmosis process as well. So, there are a lot of processes. We will study this. Okay. So, now my dear students, imagine, imagine what you have to do is you have to stand and you are, you'll have to go to the kitchen. You'll have to go to the kitchen. Okay. So, what happens in the kitchen? Kitchen, you are trying to make tea so you have that you have when we make the tea after that we have this this kind of container through which we you know put the tea and the uh, tea leaves actually just stay away and you get the liquid part in the cup yes ma'am so what happened here is that this particular container is super selective it says that only the particles which has a size, a size smaller than my pore size can go through me and the other particles will stay up right yes this is the whole mechanism of this process yes so my dear students here this particular this particular part is the semi permeable membrane it is the semi permeable membrane right yes which is denoted by spm I am not saying this is the semi-permeable membrane, but this is um, uh, this is actually explaining you what actually happens in semi-permeable membrane. Okay, now now what happens is for this particular part, you need to you need to have a apparatus something like this. Then you need to have a straight line here. Now what you have done is you have a container and you just have put in here you have differentiated the two you have differentiated the two with a particular membrane here which is your semi permeable permeable membrane okay it is given by sp m so now my dear students what is semi permeable doing here what is the role of it we'll understand this now in this side of container let us say you have pure solvent and in this particular side you have your solution okay solution means you have your solvent plus non-volatile solute okay so now my dear students what happens is what happens is this semi permeable membrane is very smart it says that my pore size is such that only and only pure solvent can pass through me not your solute so what is semi permeable doing here it is only and only allowing the solvent particle to go through it and not the solute particles okay yes so and actually and actually there is a process known as osmosis there is a process known Known as osmosis so what is osmosis now you will be understanding this i told you semi permeable membrane only and only allows the pro, uh, solvent particle to pass through it so this means that ma'am here we can say that this pure solvent can pass through this semi permeable membrane this pure solvent can pass through the semi permeable membrane if i have a pure solvent here it can go through it but if i want from the solution side to move what will happen will the whole solution can move this side no only the solvent part of the solution can move and not the solid part can move so ma'am this side also if the movement will take place only the solvent part can move and not the solute part the solute part will remain back that side okay yes so this is the whole concept of your semi permeable membrane now we are going to talk about the osmosis process okay i hope semi permeable membrane concept is clear with you yes okay we'll talk about osmosis in the next uh, slide okay i hope this is clear now i want to make you understand the concept of osmosis Okay, let's say we are talking about osmosis. So, in osmosis, my dear students, you have pure solvent here. 
you have your solution here and this is your semi permeable membrane and we know that semi permeable membrane only allows the solvent particles to pass so what happens in osmosis is in osmosis the movement is always from the pure solvent to the solution side the movement is always from the pure solvent to the uh, solution side uh, using the semi permeable membrane so what can we say that osmosis is the process in which the movement of uh, osmosis is the process in which pure solvent moves towards the solution side the pure solvent moves towards the solution side through the semi permeable membrane through the semi permeable membrane so your pure solvent moves to the solution side that is your semi permeable membrane if i talk about if i talk about in terms of concentration if i talk about in terms of concentration what can you say my dear students you don't have any solute here but you have solute present here so i can say that i can say if i if i relate the concentrations i can say that this side i have a low concentration this side I have high concentration right we don't have a solute here we have solute here so we don't have solute moles here there the concentration is nearly what nearly the concentration is zero if it is a pure solvent and here the concentration is if there is a little bit of concentrated solution so if we compare the both we can say low concentration high concentration why am I saying low concentration high concentration uh, you'll understand it a bit okay so we can see that the movement of the solvent particle in osmosis takes place from a low concentration solution to a high concentration solution through the semi permeable membrane and this process is known as your osmosis so osmosis can be defined directly you can say that uh, the movement is from pure solvent to the solution side or you can say the movement is from low concentration to the high concentration side okay so this is how you make uh, uh, you understand this if you want to write it you can write it and then then we'll move forward just a second you write it and then we'll move forward let's move forward now what are we going to do is now here you can write the osmosis part as well okay so now i hope you are clear with the definition of osmosis you can see the definition in different forms but we have understood all the definitions so you will be clear with this concept now let's read one by one all the topics see semi permeable membrane i hope you understood the concept now when a membrane is permeable to the solvent particles it is permeable to the solvent particles but impermeable to the solute particles they are called semi permeable membrane okay solvent can pass through but solute can't that is your semi permeable membrane perfect let's move forward what is osmosis osmosis my dear students movement of solvent molecules through the semi permeable membrane first and most important thing and then from the pure solvent side to the solution side from less concentration to more concentration now here two different things are said you have to be very clear with this part this says that the movement is from pure solvent side to the solution side the movement is from the pure solvent side to the solution side i hope you are clear we made this container and then we said you have pure solvent here and you have solution this side this is your semi permeable membrane then movement is this side this process is known as your this process is known as your osmosis process next my dear students the other thing which is said is that from less concentration solution to more concentrated solution if you see here this is less concentration relatively and this is your more concentration so the movement is from less concentrated solution to the higher concentrated solution now this time you have a pure solvent here you have a solution that side sometime sometime you might get a question like you have a container here and let us say you have a solution a you have a solution a here and you have a solution 
be here and this is your semi permeable membrane so i have given you let's say i have given you their con uh, concentrations as well let us say this is 2 molar and this is 3 molar so can you tell me where will be the movement where the osmosis process will take place where will be the direction of the movement you will say that my dear students that ma'am since the concentration here is less and the concentration here is more and i know that osmosis process takes place from the low concentration to the high concentration so the movement will again be in this direction so sometimes when you are given different types of solutions you can find out how the osmosis will take place that is the reason you get osmosis definition in two different forms and you need to understand each part individually perfect let's move forward what is the osmotic pressure now you have to understand what is osmotic pressure my dear students i i gave you this particular part right yes you understood the osmosis process now let's understand the other term which is we understood semi permeable membrane we understood osmosis part now we will be understanding the now we will be understanding the uh now we will be under, we will understand the osmotic pressure part so what happens is my dear students when when your solvent particle when your solvent keeps on moving to the solution side a actual a actual force is exerted they actually move this side okay so what happens is let us say you have you apply some p pressure this side see my dear students now if if somebody is moving with some uh, pressure this side you have to apply equal and opposite pressure this side so that it can stop right yes if something is moving this side then you have to apply equal pressure to this side so that a uh, equal pressure comes out as a result and both of them stops right yes so you apply some p pressure which is exactly equal which is exactly required amount to stop the movement of this pure solvent so this p pressure here is known as your osmotic pressure what is osmotic pressure then the osmotic pressure is actually the press pressure applied on the solution side i am applying on the solution side yes so osmotic pressure is the pressure applied on the solution side to stop the movement of the sol pure solvent to the solution side okay so you are actually applying some pressure to stop the movement and the pressure required is known as your osmotic pressure neither less nor more exactly equal to stop the movement of your pure solvent that is what is known as your osmotic pressure so this is the definition here osmotic pressure is the hydrostatic pressure built up on the solution side due to the osmosis from pure solvent side to the solution side a concentrated solution containing non volatile solute will have a greater osmotic pressure but lower vapor pressure now you have to tell me the meaning of this particular line now let's study the uh, now let's study the meaning of this particular line you have you have this part right yes now you have this apparatus my dear students just a second okay so now you have this part now what happens here is you have this pure solvent and you have the solution side if i talk to you about the osmotic pressure you will be say, you will say that ma'am osmotic pressure here because the movement is this side so we'll apply some pressure to stop this movement so uh, so we can say that solution side has a higher osmotic pressure solution side has a higher osmotic pressure right yes so we can say that solution side has a higher osmotic pressure the first thing the other thing is that my dear students you know that this is a pure solvent and this is a concentrated solution right yes if i talk about the vapor pressure then the vapor pressure here will be p not and since it is a solution so the vapor pressure will be p s right and we have talked this n number of times that the vapor pressure of your solution is less than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent this is what was told to you in the line 
a concentrated solution containing non volatile solute will have a greater osmotic pressure but the lower vapor pressure right osmotic pressure was more on the solution side but the vapor pressure of the solution is less right yes so i hope you've got this point as well you can write all these points and then we'll move forward okay i hope you have written this now let's move forward alternative definition of osmotic pressure one more definition it is actually telling you the same thing exact pressure to be applied on the solution side in perpendicular direction so as to stop the osmosis from pure solvent side see exact pressure applied to just stop it uh, stop the osmosis from the pure solvent side is known as the osmotic pressure okay yes you can write any definition it is clear you just need to understand the concept okay perfect now my dear students the next topic is your reverse osmosis what is reverse osmosis see reverse osmosis will be the uh, if you reverse the osmosis process right yes now imagine again you have to imagine the same thing a person is running this side a person is running from this side okay somebody came and just applied the pressure to stop it okay so they both stopped now this person had more power and it applied a little more pressure this direction it applied a little more direction uh, pressure in this direction what will happen first this was moving he came he made him stop and then he tried to push him back and the movement was in the opposite direction now so this means that the pressure which we applied in this direction was actually more than the pressure required to stop it yes then the reverse osmosis process can take place i hope you're clear now let's understand this with the actual concept uh, let's say you have the container here and let's say this is your semi permeable membrane this is your spm your semi permeable membrane this is your pure solvent and this is your solution side you are applying the pressure p from this direction okay yes you know that the movement is from the pure solvent to the solution side this is the process of osmosis i want to reverse this process i actually want what do i want i want to reverse the direction i want this to be in this direction so what will i have to do i'll have to apply some p pressure here let us say let us say that p dash is the osmotic pressure osmotic pressure what was osmotic pressure it was the exact pressure required to stop the osmosis process so p dash is the osmotic pressure and if i apply some p pressure which is actually more than the osmotic pressure if i apply a little more pressure which is more than the osmotic pressure then the movement will be now from the solution side to the pure solvent side and but and but and but wow ma'am has used ma'am has used both the terms together but my dear students what i want to ask you here is now the movement is from solution side to the solvent side right yes what will move through the semi permeable membrane will the whole solution move no semi permeable membrane only and only allows the movement of the pure solvent so from the solution side also only and only the pure solvent part can pass through this semi permeable membrane the solute part will remain in the solution side only so in reverse osmosis the solution side starts to move towards the pure solvent side but uh, from the solution only the pure solvent moves and not the solute particle this is known as the reverse osmosis process let's just read it if the pressure applied on the solution side is greater than the osmotic pressure of the solution the solvent will flow from the solution side to the pure solvent side and it is called the reverse osmosis process right yes i hope this is clear now my dear students what i want to make you understand is we all drink the uh, we all drink ro water right yes we've seen ro's we know that ro water pure water everyone says this right yes now let's understand the functioning of that ro what actually happens in ro ro water which we call is actually ro stands for reverse osmosis 
it actually stands for reverse osmosis and what happens in reverse osmosis is this same part you have you have i'll just make you understand here this is your semi permeable membrane so what happens is you have a solution here you have pure water here no why do we call it uh, this let's say this is your pure water and this is your impure water if you have impure water this means that impure water has some impurities in it which means that it is a solution okay so now what happens is you apply some p pressure which uh, some p pressure which is more than the osmotic pressure we os we represent osmotic pressure by pi by pi so you have applied some pressure which is more than the osmotic pressure so now what will happen the movement will be from the impure water to the pure water side but i know that the movement will only and only be of solvent particles because the semi permeable membrane allows only the solvent to pass through it so from this impure water only the part which is pure water can move through this to the pure water side and the impurities stays behind and this is how we get the pure water and that is the reason that is the functioning that actually takes place in ro's and that is the word ro comes from reverse osmosis right yes so next time when you drink water just remember this concept and tell your mother as well okay yes so this is what uh, ex uh, this is actually the part which is used in reverse osmosis so i can write that ro stands for reverse osmosis i hope you are clear with this now perfect now my dear students you have two solutions now imagine imagine i have kept two solutions now imagine i have kept two solutions solution 1 solution 2 the osmotic pressure of this solution is pi 1 and let us say osmotic pressure of this solution is pi 2 now my dear students if you have two solutions pi 1 and pi 2 which whose osmotic pressures are exactly equal then there will be no movement there will be no movement right yes and my dear students since the pressure applied are still now they both are equal that is the reason there will be no movement and such solutions are known as isotonic solutions such solutions are known as isotonic solutions the solutions having same osmotic pressure are known as isotonic solutions okay yes i hope this is clear with you if you want to write it you can write it and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it now you want to draw this you can draw this as well okay now my dear students let's write the mathematical expression now you have the mathematical expression for for osmotic pressure so first in the most important thing is that osmotic pressure which is op stands for pi so the expression for it is pi that is your osmotic pressure is equal to crt now let's understand what each term stands here for c pi is your osmotic pressure pi is your osmotic pressure c is the concentration of solution c is the concentration of solution in moles per in moles per liter okay then you have r r is your gas constant and t is your temperature now temperature is always taken in kelvin okay yes now my dear students what i want to tell you here is that that mostly your now when you talk about the osmotic pressure now your the value of r actually depends on what value are you taking for your osmotic pressure if your osmotic pressure is in atmosphere then your r value which you are going to use is 0.0821 liter atmosphere per kelvin per 
mole okay you will be using this value if your osmotic pressure is in pascals my dear students then you are going to use 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole value okay and if you have if you have your osmotic pressure in any other value then you will have to convert it into atmosphere unit and then all the numericals so unit conversion is very important this part is very important you have to see the unit of your osmotic pressure and accordingly you have to use the value of your r okay yes i hope you're clear with this this is the mathematical expression we are going to use just write it and then we'll solve a numerical and be clear with the concept okay I hope you've written it. Now let's solve a question. What does the question say? Read the question. Calculate the osmotic pressure in Pascals. Now my dear students, you have to calculate the osmotic pressure in Pascals. So this means that I'll have to use the R value as 8.314 Joule per Kelvin per mole. This is the first information that I know. Uh, exerted by a solution prepared by dissolving one gram of polymer now you are given the mass of polymer you are given the mass of polymer as one gram of polymer of molar mass also you are given the molar mass of that polymer equal to 185 in 450 ml of water you are given the volume of water equal to 450 ml and you're given the temperature 37 you need to convert it into kelvin so add 273 to it this will be 0 1 7 10 11 1 1 and 310 kelvin okay now my dear students i know that pi is equal to crt thi? so now i have c i need to calculate the concentration concentration means that you have to calculate in moles per liter so for calculating the concentration c i need moles of solute upon volume of solution in liters what are the moles of solute i have the polymer i am given the mass 1 gram and 185 grams this is 185 grams okay so 1 upon 185 divided by volume of the solution in liters i have the volume See, you have volume of water given here. The volume of water will actually be equal to the volume of solution. Okay. So, it is 450 ml just converted into liters. 450 by 1000. So, this is your concentration. So, we can put this value 1 upon 185 into 1000 upon 450. Right. Into. What will be the R value we are going to use? Because we have to calculate in Pascal. So, we will be using 8.3. 314 into temperature 310 so this is how you can calculate your value of the osmotic pressure right yes it is super easy very good you can solve this and you will get your answer so if you want to write it then pause the video write it and then we'll move forward let's solve some PYQs. Let's solve some PYQs. Okay. Yes. So now my dear students, the question says that isotonic solutions have. What are isotonic solutions? See, such an easy question was asked in NEET 2020, my dear students. What are isotonic solutions? Isotonic solutions are those solutions. Isotonic solutions are those solutions which have the same osmotic pressure right yes so same osmotic pressure means option c will be your correct answer i hope this is clear with you perfect let's move forward to the next question next question says that a solution of sucrose sucrose molar mass is given has been prepared by dissolving 68.5 grams of sucrose in 1000 grams of water the freezing point of the solution obtained will be. You have to calculate the freezing point of the solution. Okay. Now you are given that Kf4 water is 1.86. So you know that your pure solvent is water. Right. Now my dear students, do you know that freezing point of pure water? That is Tf0 is 0 degree Celsius. I hope this is clear with you. Yes ma'am. Now you are, you are given the mass of your solute mass of your solute is given to be 68.5 grams also molar mass of solute is given to be 342 grams per mole also my dear students you are given the mass of your solvent water which is 1000 
grams okay you have to calculate the freezing point of the solution so you have to calculate tf tf is the freezing point of solution that is the thing you need to calculate right yes we know that delta tf is equal to kf into molality kf is given to be 1.86 molality is moles of your solute what is your solute sucrose mass of solute upon molar mass of solute which is 68.5 divided by 342 divided by mass of your solvent in kg what is your solvent water mass of solvent in kg 1000 grams divided by 1000 right yes so this will give you the mass molality this is exact molality this is kf value you will calculate delta tf you know that delta tf is actually equal to it is it is depression freezing point this means that delta tf is equal to tf not minus tf and my dear students you know that the freezing point of pure water is 0 degree celsius right yes so i can say that i can say that this will be equal to 0 minus tf 0 minus tf you can calculate it like this also also if you want to convert it into kelvin you can convert it into kelvin as well it is all your choice you are given answers in degree celsius that is the reason i have used it in degree celsius only you can convert it into kelvin and then solve the question and then convert that into degree celsius as well okay so this will be the value so i can say that minus of delta tf is actually equal to this value so just solve it and you will get your answer okay you will get your answer solve this question and see which of the following options is correct this is how you're going to solve this question such a easy question right yes just go through it and then we'll move forward i hope you're clear with this particular part now can we move forward now let's move forward and solve another question you have another question from uh, 2021 you have a question of j 2021 let's see the question question says that you have 1.46 grams of a bio biopolymer dissolved in so first of all i am given the mass of my polymer 1.46 in 100 ml water so i am given the volume of water as 100 ml at 300 kelvin so i am given the temperature as well 300 kelvin exerted a osmotic pressure of 2.42 so i am given the osmotic pressure equal to 2.42 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 bar now my dear my dear students since you are given the pressure in bar here i am just for calculations just for calculations i know i know there is a very little bit difference in atmosphere and bar but just for calculation because i need the answer in integer type so i can say that this is nearly equal to 2.42 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 atmosphere right yes just for the calculations i am taking this because they have a very minor difference okay the molar mass of the biopolymer is so you have to calculate the molar mass of the biopolymer you are given the r value okay since you are given the r value then you need not use this you are given the r value in bar very easy first i had to calculate it then i'll i'll i would have used 0 0.0821 but in my question i am given the r value so let it be in bar only okay yes now i know that osmotic pressure is equal to concentration into r into t first we have to calculate the concentration concentration is in moles per liter moles of solute is given mass upon molar mass molar mass i have to calculate so 1.46 upon molar mass of the solute divided by molarity volume of your solution in liters you have 100 ml of water this is exactly equal to the I had to write here volume now. This will, this will be equal to volume of your solution also. Okay. These are the few things which you need to understand that you will have to use this as the volume of your solution also. So since the volume is 100 ml, so this will be the volume of your uh, solution as well. So volume 100 ml, you need it in liters, so divided it by 1000. So this is the concentration expression okay so you are given pi value as 2.42 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 this will be equal to concentration 1.46 upon molar mass into 1000 upon 100 
into r value you are given in the question you have to use 0.083 into temperature 300 so you have this part you only need to calculate one expression which is this you can just solve it and you will get the value of molar mass mind it you have to give the answer in the in the form of dash into 10 raised to the power 4 grams per mole okay so make sure that whatever the answer is coming you will convert it into 10 raised to the power 4 form and then give your answer so this is how you would have solved this question if you would have you were giving this particular exam okay yes such an easy question right so easy questions are asked you only need to know the concept let's move forward next question my dear okay if you want to write it then you can write it Next question. Next question says that a solution of sucrose whose molar mass is 342 grams per mole uh, has been prepared by dissolving 68 point. Have we solved this question? Just a second. Can I check? A solution of sucrose. No, 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 no. This, this is just a little bit dif different question. It was asked in 2010 and the same type of question was asked. Okay, this is also in 2010. This was also asked in 2010. See, a little bit different and everything is made same. See, the question is that a solution of sucrose whose molar mass is 342 grams has been prepared by dissolving 68.5 grams of sucrose in thousand grams of water so you have mass of water equal to thousand grams you have moles of sucrose equal to what is the given mass 68.5 divided by molar mass which is 342 okay yes the freezing point of the solution obtained will be i think there is some something wrong with the question because the uh, question is saying that you have to tell the freezing point but options are of the molar mass right yes so uh, there is a little bit of some error in the question okay so let's just leave this question we will not do this question because the question is incorrect okay yes let's move forward to the next question which is this try to solve this question yourself try to solve this question my dear students what does the question say question says that kf for water is it is also a pyq now again my dear student the year is not written here but it is a PYQ so try to solve this question. The question says that KF for water is 1.86 so let's first write KF value. I'll tell you which year as well okay. In If your autom automobile radiator holds 1 kg of water so you are given the mass of solvent equal to 1 kg. Then how many grams of ethylene glycol? So you have to tell the mass of your solute which is your ethylene glycol. Then how many grams of ethylene glycol? You can calculate the molar mass of ethylene glycol. How? You have 2 into 12 carbon plus 6 into 1 plus 16 into 2. Calculate the molar mass from here. Okay. Then how many grams of ethylene glycol must you add to get the freezing point of the solution lowered by 2.8 degrees Celsius. Minus 2.8 degrees Celsius is given. This means that delta TF value in mod is equal to 2.8. Right? Yes. I know that delta TF is equal to KF into molality. I need to calculate the molality. How can I calculate the molality my dear students? Moles of solute. Solute is ethylene glycol. So mass I have to calculate for ethylene glycol. Molar mass you will calculate it from here. So molar mass divided by mass of solvent. Solvent mass is given to be 1 kg. You need mass of solvent in kg. So this is 1. So this is the molality. Right? Yes. Perfect. Let's put the values. Delta TF is 2.8. KF value is given to be 1.86. And molality is WS upon molar mass. You will solve this and you will get the molar mass. You only calculate, you only need to calculate the mass of your solute. You have this, you have this, you have this. So can you calculate this? Yes, you can calculate this. Solve this and you will get your answer here. You will get your answer here okay yes perfect so this is how these questions are asked such, such easy questions my dear students you just have to practice them okay you just have to practice them 
so with this let's end our session okay you need to know the year i'll just let you know the year and then we'll we'll end our session okay mm, what is which year are we talking about uh just a second i the question was that the year is it is a question of ai triple e 2012 okay so it is a question of ai triple e 2012 let's correct the previous question also and i'll give you the homework a solution containing 10 grams okay uh, i'll this i'll write the question here my dear students the question is a solution containing a solution containing 10 grams per decimeter cube of urea you have a solution which is containing this the molar mass of urea is given to be 60 grams per mole okay is isotonic it is isotonic with 5% with 5% solution of a non volatile solute of a non volatile solute okay the molecular mass of this non volatile solute the molecular mass of this non volatile solute you have to give the molecular mass of this non volatile solute which year my dear students it is of ai pmt 2006 ai pmt 2006 so try this question we'll do this question and then we'll end the session okay so let's see what does the question say question says that you have a solution containing 10 grams per decimeter cube of urea so if you have 10 grams of urea per decimeter cube you have 10 grams of urea per decimeter cube okay this is what it is given to you so is isotonic with 5% solution of a non volatile solute you have a 5% solution of a non volatile solute okay so my dear students 5% solution means that you have 5 grams of your solute you have 5 grams of your solute present in 100 milliliter of solution i hope this is clear with you so so can i say that can i say that 5 grams if 5 grams are present in 100 milliliters then how many grams of solute will be present in 1000 milliliters 50 grams unitary method 50 grams of your solute will be present in 1000 milliliter of solution right yes and 1000 milliliter means 1 liter of solution I hope you've got this point. Yes, ma'am. Right, perfect. So you have fifty grams of urea present in one liter of solution in one solution, and in another solution one you have ten grams present in one decimeter cube. I want to tell you here the most important thing which you need to know is that one decimeter cube is actually equal to one liter. So this means that I have ten grams of urea in. 1 liter solution in this solution i have 10 grams of urea present in 1 liter solution in this solution i have 50 grams of urea present in 1 liter of solution so if i want to if i want to find out the moles of solute present that is your moles of urea then i just need to divide the given mass by molar mass and i am given the molar mass of urea to be 60 grams so 50 divided by 50 divided by 60 moles of urea are actually present in 1 liter of solution and here my dear students 10 upon 60 moles of urea are present in 1 liter 
solution. I hope this is clear with you. See, a solution containing 10 gram per decimeter cube of urea is isotonic with 5% solution of a non-volatile solute. Okay, you don't know that this is urea. Okay, then this is not urea. It is not urea. You don't know what is the solute here, but you know the solute here. This is how we will read this question. Okay. Now, listen very clearly what the question is saying. The question says that you have one solution. You have one solution, the solution one, which contains 10 grams of urea in one decimeter cube. You know that one decimeter cube is actually equal to one liters. So, ma'am, 10 grams of urea are present in one liter solution. I know the molar mass of urea 60. So, if I divide this given mass by molar mass, I can say that this much moles of urea are present in one liter of solution. Okay, very clear. So, if I talk about the concentration, So, huh. so, if I talk about the concentration of solution here, this will be moles of solute 10 upon 60 divided by 1 liter volume. So, 10 upon 60 is the concentration of your first solution. Okay. In my second solution, my dear students, it is given that it is 5% solution. It is a 5% solution. So, 5% solution means that you have 5 grams present in 100 ml solution. So, if I talk about 1000 ml, if I am multiplying by 10 here, I will have to multiply by 10 here as well, unitary method. Then 50 grams will be present in 1000 ml of the solution, which means 1 liter of the solution. I don't know what is the non-volatile solute. Let us consider the molar mass of the solute to be m. So, if the molar mass of non volatile solute is m grams per mole then the moles 50 upon m moles will be present in 1 liter solution. So, if I talk about the concentration of this solution, the concentration of this solution will be equal to moles of solute which is 50 upon molar mass divided by volume of the solution 1 liter. So, this means that 50 upon m is the actual the concentration of the solution 2. Now, next information is given that both of the solutions are isotonic. It is given that both of the solutions are isotonic. Tonic. So, if they are isotonic, isotonic solutions, then I know that pi 1 should be equal to pi 2. That is, osmotic pressure of 1 should be equal to osmotic pressure of the other solution. That is what is known as by isotonic solution when two solutions have the same osmotic pressure. So, this means that C1R into T1 should be equal to C2R into T2. But my dear students, since there is no information about the change in temperature, this means that everything is taking place at the constant temperature. So, we can say that T1 is also equal to T2. So, this means that C1 into RT is equal to C2 into RT. So, this can be cancelled. So, C1 should be equal to C2. This means that the concentration of both the solution should also be equal. Let's talk about the concentration of first solution which is 10 upon 60. So, 10 upon 60 is actually equal to 50 upon M. So, this is equal to 50 upon M. So, this will be cancelled out. So, here it comes out to be molar mass of the solute comes out to be 6530 300 grams per mole. So, this is the molar mass of the solute. So, this is the molar mass of the solute that we can calcu calculate. Okay. Yes. So, this is how you needed to solve this question. This question was the most important question of this session. And uh, thank God we wrote this question and we haven't mix, mix, missed this question. Right? Yes. So, I hope you are clear with this part. I just calculated the concentrations of the two parts. I was given it as isotonic. So, I equated the osmotic pressures of both. I used the formula and I found out the molar mass of the non-volatile salute okay yes perfect my dear students with this with this we come to the end of our session i hope you are very clear with all the parts of this particular session we are almost done with the liquid solutions chapter my dear students only one little topic is left which is the wandt hoff factor or you call it as abnormal masses okay 
that topic we will be covering in our last session and in our last session we will be practicing a lot of previous year questions of je and neat and my dear cut uh, students you need to try to solve all those questions because your part is exactly same they will be conceptual questions tricky questions so you need to have a grip on this part okay yes so i hope all of you enjoyed today's session i did a lot and i I, I tried to give you the most of every topic i hope you enjoyed it i hope you understood every part and i hope you are studying very well so keep studying like this we'll meet in the next session all the very best